Okay, Jerry Adams, Sinn Féin president, for what she wrote in you, Goody Ennis, and let me say I'm delighted to speak to you today on behalf of the Sunday Spectrum on Rinse FM. So now, before I get into what brings you to Ennis this weekend, maybe first could you give me a comment on the attack last night in Antrim, which resulted in the deaths, unfortunately, of two British soldiers? Well, I see the, the attacks as an attack on the peace process. It's counterproductive. It's wrong. Uh, the peace process was brought about not least because of the efforts over a long time of Republicans also you know, showing a bit of long-sightedness and a lot of uh, patience. So I think we have a duty to defend the peace process. Clearly the perpetrators of this uh, action want to bring all of us back, want to bring our country back to uh, conflict, want to bring more British soldiers onto the streets. And I think as Democrats and Republicans, we have a duty to uh, oppose that. So it's the time for calm but decisive uh, leadership and for everyone who supports the broad ideals of United Ireland because we now have a strategy and we have the possibility through peaceful and democratic means of bringing about Irish unity. That has to be uh, defended and actively uh, promoted in the time ahead. Okay. So, well, will we move along? Um, and maybe I can get to that question. What does bring you to Ennis this weekend? Well, I'm here for two two events. One was a public meeting uh, last night in Ennis with uh, Sean Hayes, who's our local government uh, candidate, and Cathy McCafferty, who's standing for us in Shannon. And we also had uh, Patrick McLaughlin, who's our European Union candidate. And we, we had an interesting enough discussion, I think, of, you know, for a Saturday night, a very stormy Saturday night, a uh, very intense discussion about the current economic situation and the plight of our people and the remedies to all of this. And then today, Sunday, I was at the uh, Ennis Book Festival and we, we had a panel discussion with... Uh, Michael D. Uh, Higgins with uh, Connor Cleary, with Terry Prone and myself, and uh, a good, lively, interesting and good-humoured uh, debate around writing and politics and so on. Was there any uh, themes that, that stuck out, any topics that come up? Well, it was. I think the, the title for the symposium was Political Reading. Uh, and I have to say the media came in for a bit of... Uh, a bit of criticism once we got away from uh, books uh, the audience certainly those who spoke uh, have a view that the state or the RTE and the Sunday Independent was singled out for special mention really have not educated or focused or engaged in unbiased investigative uh, journalism I did make the point that you know I'm currently a number of days every week between the stuff in the north, uh, going and doing local media to try and get on onto the radar because there is still a bias against Sinn Féin and the uh, RTE and other broadcasting media. But in the local radio stations and in the provincial uh, press, uh, there's a very open uh, and I think I think intelligent engagement on in all of these issues. Okay, so we'll move along and. Say people are well aware of Jerry Adams, the politician, but perhaps less so aware of you as a writer. And I suppose this is your other career that has run in tandem with your political profile. So could you now perhaps enlighten listeners and indeed myself on Jerry Adams, the writer? Well, I first started to write in prison. I, I started to write when I was in Long Cash, and. Uh, subsequently published a little book called Cage 11. Uh, I've also done some local local history with a book called Falls, Falls Memories. And uh, as the peace process developed, I very consciously tried to set out uh, the Republican uh, version of our recent, recent history. I think it's very, very important to have it on the record. So I, I published Before the Dawn and then Hope, Hope and History. And I, I, I like writing. I, I published a, a, a column in some 
newspapers and day again were compiled in book form. And my, my particular, I suppose, affection would be for the short story form. So I have a book of short, have a book of short stories called uh, The Street. I'm glad to say that I think all of them are still uh, in print and available from good and bad bookshops <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but uh, not apparently in O'Mahony's in Limerick, as we found out yesterday. Um, so is it a compulsion for you as well as politics? Is no, that I, a compulsion? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't write just for the busyness of life uh, for perhaps six or seven months there, and then at the beginning of the year I started to write a blog, which is a new a new experience. But I actually like the discipline, which I also appreciated when I was doing uh, a column. Uh, I like the discipline of being of having to you know focus in on producing five or six hundred words by uh, a deadline. I think it's good for me. It's a bit therapeutic. You can you can you know when when you're dealing with party politics, you have to be you know you have to keep to the party line and so on, and you have to consult people and make sure you're. Get get at least some consensus for what you're saying. But if you're writing uh, in a different, slightly different personage, you can say whatever you want, and I I think that's good for me. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the Falls Road is it's a vibrant and a close knit community, and does it play much of a role in your writing? Yes. Uh, well, the, the Falls Road, but uh, I I think that whole urban uh, community which is replicated you know because the Falls Road is actually a small village uh, so it's it's replicated even though it's in a city it's replicated in villages and in towns throughout the island and the, one of the things I like is that I meet someone every so often from Europe or from Britain and they connect with what I have written so there's there's obviously a bit of universality about what goes on in in people's lives, and I I particularly am blessed with uh, you know with strong women in in my life and all all around those communities. You know they're, they're the glue which which kept families and communities to to together. So I I like to try and reflect reflect all of that and. Of course, it's about the falls because that's where I happen to come from. But it could be easily about about you know Kilkee or Kilroish or you know Spanish Point. Yeah, well, well, well said there about the strong women not today being women's. What is it? Women's. Women's. That's international. It's international Day. Women's Day today. Yeah, I I, I forgot about that, but yes, <laughs> it is International Women's Day. Well, now uh, we mentioned earlier uh, before we were recording the the Ulster diaspora or indeed the Antrim dia- diaspora. And um, I'm thinking specifically of the sizable northern community we have in Shannon. And I'm just wondering, as a writer, would you ever consider uh, giving a voice to that community? Well, I think the biggest contribution that Antrim can make to Clare is in the field of hurting. <laughs> I, I think that we have... Uh, I say that to be provocative. <laughs> <laughs> I said it last night to make sure everybody was awake. <laughs> But uh, yes, I mean, it isn't a matter of me giving a voice. Uh, the fact is, the local organisation of 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 Sinn Féin in Shannon do have a candidate in the local government elections, Kathy McCafferty. So she's our uh, choice, and hopefully, people in Shannon next June will agree with that. And and Sean Hayes is standing for us in the town of uh, Ennis as well, and Patrick McLaughlin in the European. Uh, elections, so you know we we'll, we we'll, we'll do what we can, and hopefully connect with people from this very republican part of Ireland. Okay, and so I'm, I'm regarding your writing again, and I'm thinking of um, like against the backdrop of the troubles. Do you, do you feel as a writer um, that that you almost have responsibility, or you have the ability? to put a human face on the communities and individuals who, you know, sometimes get lost and forgotten with all the media hype that surrounds the troubles? Well, y- yes and no. Uh, I, I Responsibility is probably putting it too, too sternly or too uh, strictly. 
I I like writing. That's first of all. So so I don't do it through a sense of duty. It, it's good for me. Uh, it's wonderful to be published. Uh, but of course, my writing does reflect my view of the world, and that's as much to do with crack as the joy of living, of the joy of people, of spirituality, uh, of connectiveness, uh, and well, hopefully telling you know the small stories that are, are very much part of the oral tradition in this island, but in in many ways, uh, you know, if you're if you're, I'm, I'm talking here now about uh, fiction more than more than non-fiction, but you know, usually it's written about the big figures. So it's so it's important also to, you know, history's made by all the small figures. There might be someone at the at the at, at the the head of it, or someone who articulates a certain position, or who leads in a certain way. But it's all the, you know, I mean, you you look at all the the, the big struggles in the world. Uh, Barack Obama could have done whatever Barack Obama uh, did, but he couldn't have got elected as president unless all those nondescript people had come out and decided they were going to do something about it. You know, similarly in, 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 in South Africa, you know, Nelson Mandela would still be in prison if somebody hadn't, and he would still be depicted as a communist and a bandit and a, a gangster, as opposed to the the state's person that he is, of, of small people in Ireland and South Africa across the world. And similarly, everywhere here in this, here, here, here in this island, I mean, my great uh, inspiration are all of those people who... Take, take their stand almost invisibly uh, because they think something's right. And, you know, the people who practice good neighbourliness and who practice solidarity and who have a sense of, uh, you know, I mean, I'm very much against empires and elites of any kind. And that's that's where my grounding comes from. Excellent. So uh, I'll wind it up here now and just ask you, um, with your, your long career in the public eye and you're an elected politician... And also a respected and published writer. How do you see yourself today? Is one or the other, both? Uh, well, I don't. Jeepers, <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, I don't think about it uh, that. I don't think about it that you much. If, 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 it, yeah. No, I mean, if somebody, if somebody asked me, you know, how I would like to be described, I would say as someone who did their best. Uh, but other than that, you know. Uh, I'm I'm just one of a of a very large section of people who uh, just would like to see an alternative way of of living, and I very firmly believe that we have the ability to bring that about, and and that that's that's a good way to spend your life. Okay, Jerry Adams, thank you for speaking to Sunday Spectrum. Okay, I guess uh, la la fila. Uh, la International de Demand Ditsa. Very happy International Women's Day. Yeah. To you too. Boo boo. Michael Yor. Gora Mila.